Hello everyone, welcome back to the Eternal Card Breakdown. My name is M, and we are live here to talk about the new chapters of Eternal and the new cards that are being released. We have a new four-part set of chapters. This time it looks like we're going to be focusing on Syl, the Usurper to the Cabal, starting from Youth. Uh, it looks like we have a new bundle with some new art for what will hopefully be a new Syl at the end of the month. I'm pretty excited to see what kind of hero comes out of that, but first things first, we have another card which uh, might be the most exciting one that we've seen so far out of all the promos. It's a two cost one three called Passionate Artisan. It is a civilian, which I believe is a possibly new unit type. Uh, there may be a few of these floating around, but I believe we usually use human or something along those lines. Uh, but yeah, just got to emphasize the civilian here. Um, but this is a 1-3 with your non-weapon relics can't be killed by enemies and summon reduce the cost of each relic in your deck by one. All right, so breaking things down a little bit. First off, we've got that 1-3 stat line, which is a pretty sticky little stat line that tends to be pretty good against defending uh, defending against aggro. It's not a uh, particularly strong compared to your 2-2s two or your 3-2s or anything like that. Uh, usually, like... A two cost card will have a few more stats than this, but this the extra point of health really, really matters because this card has a number of abilities that are relevant both when it comes into play and also like as a result of what it's trying to do, uh, it really wants to be able to stick on board and defend against smaller units, those two ones and other aggressive units, just to keep you alive so you can reap the benefits of its other text. With its other text, we have your non-weapon relic can't be killed by enemies, which means that Passionate Artisan becomes a pretty important target. If this card is down, it's effectively a permanent face Aegis for all of your relics, uh, which means that you are going to be able to play a lot of relic-based strategies, and your opponent's going to have to focus on this kind of unimportant two drop in order to get to those relics which can slow them down on tempo and give you the space you need to play some pretty aggressive three drops and four drops that you wouldn't otherwise be able to play. Um, this can be a really, really strong effect. If your opponent doesn't have both unit removal and relic removal, that can really make a difference, and it means that it's going to be a lot harder for your opponent to bust up certain particular relic-based strategies that you're going to be going for, which is pretty cool because the second part of this text reduces the cost of every relic in your deck by one, meaning that those cards are going to come out at a significantly lower opportunity cost and be playable for a significantly like higher amount of benefits. So in like a Rakano setup or something like that, you can play cheap relic removal, stuff like Avagraft for three, Urmstead's Lasso for two, or Manacles for two. Uh, you can fiddle around with like a lot of like interesting like little non-relic strategies and then even use relic weapons which do get reduced in cost even if they can be killed uh with passionate artisan out on the four on the force so in a Rakano artisan passionate artisan deck you're going to be seeing a lot of cheap relic weapons and also some cheap relic support for those weapons and you can build a mostly relic based deck that has pretty high amounts of removal uh, in other colors you will you're basically given access to cheaper versions of some of your most powerful cards uh, in expedition some of the big bombs include stuff like quicksilver mirror pit of lenecta uh, the doomsday assembly the big red one that can basically just blow up up your opponent with a bunch of double damage grenadines uh, all of that stuff gets cheaper and more available to play while also you get access to cheaper versions of basically any other relic that you want to use to help get there the power boosting cards like Sindane's bracers and fire sale you get to use uh, all, all the little like relic based removal cards like um the two costs that deals two damage and gives your cards charge. There's a lot of like really interesting options here that just get significant cost reductions and as a result allow you to keep playing out stuff on the board while also playing out these relics and then having the ability to have these relics be defendable for a significantly longer period of time. In other words, this card is really, really good for relic-based decks. And if there aren't enough relic-based decks in the meta right now, I would expect to see a lot of them, particularly in Expedition, but also uh, very likely enthroned as a result of this card coming out. Um, overall on power level, I think this card is pretty sick. Like, it gives you a pretty significant boost to relic-based strategies. It's a cheap and simple card 
card. It has decent stats for what it's doing, which means that it is going to be a target on board. And while the summon ability is primarily cost reduction and the passive ability is primarily just negating a very specific subset of cards, both of these two things work together to build out relic decks in a way that's going to be significantly stronger than you might expect. I would expect this card to potentially even be need of a nerf later on, uh, depending on how it goes. We've seen with cards like Transpose and other stuff like that where uh, a certain amount of relic defensiveness while also offering you like better access to relics tends to go a long way and you can do some pretty wild things with these. So I'd expect to see this card in Throne buffing up basically a wide array of interesting relic based strategies and I'd expect to see this card in Expedition both as a simple easy buff to relic weapon based decks because like that actual benefit of reducing the cost of relics is important and can be the primary reason that you play Passionate Artisan. Uh, I would also expect to see it as a method of enabling certain relic-based combos and enabling like very, very heavy relic options. This card's really good. It's pretty sick on a number of different levels. It's well statted for what it's doing, and it basically has a bunch of text that synergizes well with itself. It has the defense to support its top ability, the top ability supports its bottom ability, and the bottom ability is just really, really good value right on board because it makes it so that the basic problem that relics have, which is a significant uh, board cost and advantage, like if you're playing a four drop then and the four drop doesn't do anything on board, that can cause you a lot of like problems in the future. But being able to reduce the cost of the cards just means that you get a lot more advantage out of that. And that's going to be like really, really important for building out relic based strategies. Uh, my thoughts are that this card is really, really solid. I'd give it like a, a high A or an S tier. I think it's really, really interesting, and there's going to be a lot of interesting decks built around it. There's a possibility that it's pretty well equipped for the meta, and that the meta is pretty well equipped to deal with relic-based strategies, in which case this card will just be a nice, awesome way to build around uh, cool relic-based strategies and get some interesting things going on. But my expectation is that this is going to do pretty well. Um, so definitely give this one a shot. We're going to be trying some brews with it ourselves. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see what we can do with this card. And uh, until that happens, uh, we'll be right here until uh, getting that brew all ready. Um, so this is uh, the local Pojo channel, and uh, we will be changing the name on, on that soon, but also like uh, you can tune in here for all of the eternal based news and uh, occasional brews. And uh, I'm also doing a collaboration on Arkham with uh, Justin from playing board games. The new one of those uh, came out, I think, today. So uh, if you are interested in that, you can check out my alternate channel M plays. There's a link down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to see where this goes. It's, I'm excited to see the new Sill, and mostly I'm just excited to see a lot of random relics and expedition. Let's see how that goes, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.